Number 10, popcorn. To kick off the list, probably the one risk that nobody would have ever thought of, it's popcorn. Microwavable popcorn is a pretty popular snack, and the smell you get when you first take it out of the microwave is alike none other. But have you ever wondered if there are some secrets behind that godly smell? Well, yeah, there is. And the secret is a chemical called diacetyl, which is the artificial butter product added to the popcorn. It isn't only this though. The ink and the glue on the bags also use harmful chemicals that could pose a health problem. These chemicals cause a condition dubbed popcorn lung, or rather obstructive bronchitis. It's a disease that blocks the airways to the lungs, sometimes being so extreme that it requires a single lung or even double lung transplant. As you could probably guess, the disease makes the lungs vulnerable and can cause changes in the lung cells, causing lung cancer. Workers in popcorn and chip factories have often reported symptoms of the disease, often being linked to the popcorn lung. Rates of diagnosis are often higher in those who consume or frequently deal with large quantities of popcorn than those who don't. A good way to avoid this risk is to take the healthier alternative, buy some popcorn kernels and make them over the stove, foregoing the buttery warmness and convenience of Orville for the chance to live another day. Number 9. Processed Meats Just recently, red and processed meats were categorized as mild carcinogens, causing a lot of controversy as to just how much meat is dangerous to eat. The fact is, a largely red meat diet wasn't ever really healthy to begin with. Red and processed meats cause cancer through HAME, part of the red pigment in the blood. HAME is broken down in a human gut to create a family of chemicals called N-nitroso compounds. These chemicals can damage the lining of the bowel, causing the body to regenerate more cells to regain the lost lining. As a result of this regeneration, more cells are created and that means more chances for cells to mutate into cancer. Along with red meats, processed meats have been shown to have an exponentially more dangerous effect on the bowel lining with cell death and regeneration rates skyrocketing due to preservatives found within the meat. Even still, these are both very mild and more or less indirect risks. And you shouldn't be trying to completely remove red meat from your diet, but, and we're not naming names, a certain anti-meat demographic may have had a point after all. Number 8. Alcohol in the UK, alcohol has largely been linked to around 4% of all cancer diagnoses. This isn't caused by binge drinking in large doses or by any specific type of alcohol, but by alcohol itself. Drinking a glass of wine a couple times a week, as is custom for most people, can increase the risk of cancer in the mouth, throat, esophagus, breast, liver, and bowels. So how does this happen? Well, when consumed, alcohol is quickly turned into a chemical called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde can damage cells, as well as stop them from repairing themselves. Acetaldehyde also causes liver cells to grow faster than normal, and this sort of regeneration can lead to genetic changes that further increase the risk of cancer. While alcohol's conversion into acetaldehyde is mainly done by the liver, other bacteria also make this conversion, mostly in the mouth and stomach. How do you fix this? Well, simply just cut down your alcohol intake. Though alcohol does increase your risk for cancer, some alcoholic drinks do have their own health bonuses and benefits. But in the end, the risk is rather small, but should always be remembered for safety purposes. Number 7. Genetics Cancer is very often caused by something that is absolutely unpreventable. Your genetics. The unfortunate fact of inheriting cancer from your ancestors is that it can't be prevented, but that doesn't necessarily mean all hope is lost. Genetic cancer is exactly what it sounds like. It's passed down from parent unto child and puts said child in increased risk of developing certain types of cancer. You know how doctors sometimes ask if you have any relatives with cancer? They ask this because many hereditary cancers are 50% more common than not, meaning that if a close family member develops cancer, there's a good chance that you are equally as likely to get it. The main reason that genetically transferred cancer is so dangerous is that many people evade regular doctor's checkups. No one wants to sit naked in a cold office as they get examined by a complete stranger, all the while staring at medical graphs that make them feel like a complete idiot. People feel so strongly about this that more than 50% of men report not seeing a doctor for over a year prior to being asked. As a result, most men, and to a lesser degree women, discover cancer in their body far too late into its development, and die as a result. The easiest way to get rid of cancer is to catch it in its earliest stages, before it can actually spread across your body. So is a colonoscopy the most glamorous thing? Maybe not, but I assure you, getting a colonoscopy is much less of a pain in the ass than getting cancer. Number 6. X-rays and gamma rays. Unfortunately, being exposed to large amounts of gamma radiation won't turn you into the Incredible Hulk. The reality is far, far worse. These types of radiation are highly carcinogenic. Evidenced by nuclear bomb survivors, humans exposed to large amounts of radiation for cancer treatment, and miners working in uranium mines. The very unfortunate one of those three is radiation therapy. In an almost sick irony, radiation therapy might get rid of certain cancers, but later cause others. 
X-rays too can increase your risk for cancer. Dental X-rays can cause meningioma, a type of brain tumor, and spinal X-rays come with an increased risk for breast cancer and bone cancer. Despite this, while X-rays do carry a risk for cancer, X-rays are a modern and essential technology and if your doctor recommends one, the risk is usually worth it. Without X-rays, many medical procedures would be far more difficult. The truth is, many medical procedures come with associated downsides and risks, cancer being a prime example. Number 5. Obesity and Sugar If you've ever spent any time online, you've probably seen that people claim nearly everything causes cancer these days. Though many of these claims are false, one of the causes that is evidenced to be true is consuming too much sugar, but not as directly as you might think. Countries like Canada and the US have quite the sweet tooth, consuming far above the recommended intake. Mix this with a few other unhealthy eating habits and the result is an obesity epidemic. Obesity is proven to be a major cause of cancer with research showing that annually more than 84,000 new cases of cancer are caused by obesity. That's nearly 7% in women and 5% in men. Obesity contributes to the risk of cancer in several ways, such as causing fat tissue to produce excess estrogen, high levels of which are heavily associated with increased risk of breast, endometrial, and several other forms of cancer. As the world's consumption of sugar and the global obesity levels rise, so does the cancer rates. So if you're just not loving it anymore, it might be time to ditch the Dunkin' Donuts and start running on a treadmill, rather than your daily coffee and donut. Number 4. HPVs HPV, or human papillomavirus, is a group of sexually transmitted infections that come in various forms. More specifically, there are high-risk HPVs and low-risk HPVs. The low-risk HPVs are usually the ones you usually hear about. They cause warts and rashes on your junk, but are relatively harmless for the carrier. But if we're talking about HPV in terms of cancer, then we'll want to stick with the high-risk ones. HPV 16 and 18 are particularly nasty and are responsible for most cases of HPV-related cancer. HPVs cause 95% of anal cancers, 70% of throat, tongue, and tonsil cancers, and virtually all cases of cervical cancer. Not to mention a plethora of penile and vaginal cancers. As mentioned earlier, HPV is sexually transmitted and can be somewhat prevented through the use of vaccines or, like any other STI, more or less negated from the use of condoms. Unfortunately, after being infected, there is currently no way to completely rid yourself of the virus. HPV causes cancer when it enters a cell as the proteins it creates interfere with cell functions, causing them to expand continuously. People who smoke, have a weakened immune system, have had multiple children, or have had poor oral hygiene, have a much larger risk of contracting HPV and HPV-related cancers. Number 3. Asbestos Asbestos is an organic material that is highly resistant to heat chemicals and does not conduct electricity. As a result, the 1930s to the 1970s saw regular use of asbestos in multiple industries, from insulation in houses to automotive parts to even being woven into fabrics. It was later found that asbestos was a pretty nasty substance and a highly carcinogenic material. After being banned in 1977, the use of asbestos fell heavily, but pre-constructed houses and buildings were rarely renovated to remove it. If a material contained asbestos is drilled into, cut, or in any way reduced to dust, the asbestos can be released into the air as tiny inhalable fibers. Due to their resistant qualities, asbestos can stick around the body for long periods of time, causing lacerations and blocking airways. Unfortunately, the result of asbestos poisoning are hard to study because the symptoms usually don't occur until around 15 to 30 years after the initial inhalation. Regardless of that fact, asbestos has been proven to increase the risks of lung, mesothelioma, and multiple other types of cancer. To protect yourself from asbestos, don't muck around with anything built, manufactured, or constructed between the 30s and 70s. Remember kids, if you find an old abandoned house, it's probably haunted by nothing except for the remnants of an old, dangerous insulator. Number 2. Sun Exposure Depending on where you live, it might not exactly be beach time yet, but the risks of long-term exposure to the sun are still very real. The sun releases three types of ultraviolet rays, UVA, UVB, and as well as small amounts of UVC. Luckily, virtually all UVC is blocked by the Earth's atmosphere, which is a very good thing, as UVC is by far the deadliest of the three. Ultraviolet rays, as well as all solar rays, are a form of radiation, and too much ultraviolet radiation can damage the genetic material in your skin cells. If this damage is allowed to build up, it can cause cells to grow out of control, which can turn into a malignant cancer. Have you ever spent a day at the beach and accidentally gotten sunburned, only to find out that your skin subsequently starts to peel? 
This is because while your body is trying to get rid of these damaged cancer causing cells, it can't heal them, and instead opts to have them peel off. Indoor tanning creates a similar scenario, and can be even more dangerous as it is usually done on a regular basis. 90% of skin cancer is caused by exposure to UV rays. Want to avoid the damage to your skin caused by the sun? Then get out some SPF 15 and go to town. SPF stands for sun protection factor, the number meaning how much longer the sunscreen will keep you from being sunburnt. For example, SPF 15 will protect you 15 times longer than normal from sunburns if applied every two hours. Sunscreen is one of, if not the most effective form of protecting yourself from UV rays. Number one. Smoking. It's printed and advised on every single pack these days. Cigarettes are a major cause of cancer, accounting for nearly 30% of all cancer-related deaths and nearly all cases of lung cancer. In fact, the chemicals found in tobacco smoke are proven to harm nearly every bodily organ and can cause cancer in many, if not all of them. The scariest thing about cigarettes, though, is that they don't only affect the person smoking them. Studies show that pregnant women who smoke are more likely to miscarry and smoking is stated to cause nearly 480,000 premature deaths each year making it the leading cause of premature deaths in North America. Not only this, but the US Surgeon General says that living with smokers can increase a non-smoker's chance of developing lung cancer by 20-30% to 30 each year. As you probably know, smoking is incredibly addictive and is a very difficult obstacle to overcome. But recent studies do show the benefits of quitting smoking start early, and after just a few months, an ex-smoker's risk of cancer drops drastically. Studies even suggest that people who have already been diagnosed with some form of cancer may be able to reduce the chance of the cancer advancing by up to 40% if they quit soon after being diagnosed. Normally a joke might go here, but come on, let's be honest, smoking is no joke. 